Hello everyone, welcome to part one of our series on how to make a 3D game in Scratch. The first thing we'll need to do is replace this cat with an actual player. Let's press the delete icon and let's paint a new sprite. I'll zoom in here and for the player I'll just use a rectangle. I'll change the outline to zero and the fill, I'll change it to light blue. Now let's draw the player on the screen. I'm making him very small, you don't need to make him too big. And I'm going to select the reshape tool, delete the first point and move the second point to the middle. So now it's a triangle. And now I need to center it, so make sure that it's centered right in the middle. There we go. And I'm also going to make it a little bit smaller. That's perfect size. I'll rename the sprite to player. And now that we have our player, we also need the level. I'll make a new sprite, I'll call it level. And I'm going to design my level. So let's choose a darker color for the walls. And let's draw a border around our screen. I'm going to fast forward this just so it doesn't take up too much time. So we have our level here, and I'm done with it. And you'll see that it's kind of off the screen, and that's because it's not centered. Let's code that in real quick. I'll drag in when green flag clicked, then let's go to 0, 0, just so it's in the center of the screen. And also let's show, just so we make sure that we're not hidden. A quick test, and it shows that that works. Now we'll need to code in our player movements. Let's drag out when green flag clicked. Let's reset our position first thing. I'll drag my player somewhere where there's no walls on the screen, and I'll copy these positions into the go to block. So when the green flag is clicked, the player should go to there. Then let's actually switch to the player costume. I need to rename that real quick. I forgot to do that player. Okay. Now we need a forever loop. And let's first tackle rotation. If we are pressing the left arrow, let's rotate to the left. I'll change this to 8 degrees. And if we are pressing the right arrow, let's rotate to the right. I'll change this to also 8 degrees. Now we need to move up and down. For this, I'll use the up and down arrow keys, of course. So if key up arrow pressed, let's move three steps. And if the down arrow is pressed, let's move minus three steps since that would mean backwards. Let's press the green flag. Let's use the left and right arrow keys to rotate and we can move up and down. Great, the only problem is that we can move through walls and that is not something we want to happen in our game. Let's go to the costumes and I'll zoom in on a player. We need to make a hitbox. Let's right click on the player and press duplicate. I'll rename this to hitbox. And I'm just going to draw a small square on the screen about the same size as the player sprite. I'll delete the original costume, the original costume. And let's move this to the center. So a hitbox is something that collides with the level. Let's go back to our code. For our collision detection, let's make a new block. I'll call it move. I'll add an input and I'll call this steps. And let's run without screen refresh. First, let's set rotation style to left, right. And I'll change this to don't rotate. Then let's switch costume to hitbox. I'll make a new block. I'll call it apply movement, since that is what it will do. I'll add an input called X and another one called Y and press OK. But now I'll just drag this off to the side. I'll drag in apply movement under switch costume to hitbox. And this is where we will do our collision detection code. I'll drag out a times block in the first slot. I'll drag in steps in the first times and then we need to multiply this by sine of direction. Then in the second, I'll just put zero. Now let's duplicate this. So let's duplicate. 
And then instead of being in the first slot, I'll put this in the second. And in the first slot, I'll type zero. I'll change this to cosine of direction instead. Then let's switch costume to player. And let's set rotation style to all around, just so we can rotate again. And our second block, apply movement. This is where we will actually apply the movement. For that, I'll drag out change x by 10 and change x by x, change y by 10 and change y by y. Now we need to make sure if we are touching the level, we move out again. So if touching level, then I'll change x by go to operators, drag out a times block and I'll multiply minus one times x. So if we are moving forward, then we move backwards. And I'll do the same thing for y, so change y by minus one times y. And now we need to replace our move steps block here. So instead of move three steps, we'll drag in move three with our own custom block and then move minus three for backwards. So let's try moving into a wall. Boom, we'll see that we can't go through it. Awesome, that was pretty simple, wasn't it? And we can also move backwards into it. Great. One thing we'll need to add though is player strafing and that's when the player can move left or right. That's pretty simple to do. All we need to do is drag out if we are pressing a on our keyboard. If A is pressed, then let's rotate 90 degrees to the left. Let's move 3, and then we'll rotate 90 degrees back to the right. Let's do the same thing for D. If key D pressed, then let's rotate 90 degrees to the right move three and then rotate 90 degrees back to the left. Let's test this out. So I'm pressing A and D and you can see moving left and right. And this will work in any rotation that we're at. So that's it for part one. Make sure to smash subscribe so you don't miss a notification bell for part two. And make sure to like the video if you did indeed like it. So that's it for part one. Make sure to stay tuned for part two.